Are boomers better cooks than millennials? Today we'll discover which generation makes the best chefs. Now as a millennial, I am naturally rooting for us because we were the first generation to believe in quality ingredients, like Graza, who's sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now Graza is not just about pretty packaging and a fun squeezy bottle, though it does have both. It's high quality olive oil that's unbelievably delicious and fresh. Made from single origin Pequal olives grown in high-end Spain, Graza is never blended, always fresh, and offers a noticeably more flavorful taste than other olive oils. Plus, it's super affordable, making it easy to enjoy the best olive oil every day without paying those fancy the oil prices, you know the prices. Whether you're drizzling the punchy aromatic drizzle or cooking with the heat resistant sizzle, Graza's squeeze bottle makes every pour effortless and my God, I'm so tired of all the olive oil stains in my pantry. If you run out, you can easily refill your bottle with their eco-friendly refill cans from their website or your local Whole Foods. Graza is fresh, vibrant, and pure, much like myself, and it is simply the best olive oil you'll ever taste. And the best part, it is on sale for a limited time. It's their only sale of the year, so you gotta take advantage. Between now and October 28th, all new customers will get 20.76% off, that is highly specific, at graza.co, automatically applied at checkout. Or if you're already a user, you'll get 16% off your subscription so you can have your favorite olive oil delivered to your door whenever you want. That is VIP service and you deserve it. Thanks again to Graza for sponsoring that portion of today's video. Trevor, you feeling ready to represent Gen Z? Yes, I'm feeling ready to represent Generation Z, the generation of cool people who love to have fun and you know, are really just hoping for a better future. And I'm a millennial and I can has cheeseburger. <laughs> Let's welcome our boomer chef, none other than the Charles Lincoln Neal II. Yeah. Hey. Good to see you, man. One of my top three favorite Charles Lincoln Neals. And then it's three of us, but uh, you guys might as well get ready, cause uh, I'm gonna teach you how to cook. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm ready. Charles, I cannot wait to see what you got in store for us today. I'm ready to learn something, frankly. Now we will all be cooking with the same three secret ingredients. We got cabbage, brown sugar, and then paper that says pork on it. Pork. We cook with pork, and then we were all tasked with coming up with one secret ingredient that perfectly represents our generation. Ready to let the generational smackdown begin? I'm ready. Can you call us yeah. whippersnappers? Yeah, you, all you whippersnappers. <laughs> me? Yeah. I'm a whippersnapper? Especially snapper. you. Yeah. Especially me. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Let's get cooking. And weighing in at 175 pounds last time he checked, standing at a wha wha whopping height of six foot four, Je representing Generation Z or Generation Z if you live across the pond, Trevor. Woo! Yeah! Got some claps. Okay, uh, my secret ingredient that I'm using is Takis. Well, I guess it's not secret, it's just my ingredient. I'm gonna get onions and garlic, sweating in a pan, and let me tell you why. Because you've heard of the Frito pie or a walking taco. Technically, the difference is, is that a Frito pie can be contained to a bag or it can be in another vessel. A walking taco always must be contained to the Frito bag. And if you don't know what those things are, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Trevor is sad and has low self-esteem. My millennial ass, not at all. You know why? Trophies, dozens of them, just for participating. And you know what generation gave me those trophies? Charles's. We didn't ask for those when I was seven years old. You were the ones who were complaining that my child doesn't feel special enough and now I feel too special. You ought to be special <laughs> if we talked to you. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> uh, pork was the secret ingredient. Pork belly was literally everywhere when I was growing up. You go into any fancy restaurant, they're like, oh, pork fat washed bourbon in your cup. We're never gonna die. Uh, and pork belly was literally everywhere. That was that was just the rage. That's what we're doing. I still love it. Um, I will not apologize for my generation. So I'm gonna make a little marinade for the pork belly. When you come from the south, and the, you, you try to keep things simple. Cause you know, a lot of people get stupid around here, and when we when we cook something, we just keep it pretty simple with what we do. We got a little old Boston butt right here, and we're gonna take first, and we're gonna take. And they got me a spoon here, but I don't need a spoon. But hey, I did wash my hands before I started. I didn't see Josh and Trevor do that. Uh, I'm gonna be making just some like really nice, like spice seasoned pork, uh, some nacho cheese and putting it on top of these Takis in a bag and it's gonna be delicious. I feel pretty good going into today because here's the thing, I'm not threatened by Josh. 
he has shown time and time again to um, really self-sabotage. Actually, you know, to put it in terms that my fellow Generation Zedders will understand, uh, if you're familiar with parkour civilization, Josh is the type of person to make the one block vertical jump for the beef, uh, risking his life for a mere half hunger bar more, uh, whereas I play it safe and do the one block jump for the chicken and live to jump another day. And I can't really put it more simply than that. Um, Take it back! Also another hallmark of millennial cuisine, we took inspiration from all over the world because for the first time, Arab Spring 2012, you remember that, Trevor? I was probably playing Halo 3. Sick. <laughs> Boundless communication, connecting the entire world. It was all exciting and we were like, well, let's take some Japanese ingredients. We're doing mirin, we're doing soy. We're using that brown sugar Josh from the ingredients in there. millennials invented Japan. Millennials did not invent Japan, but it's, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, coming off of like the, the Japanophobia Japan of the 80s, followed by the Japanophilia of my generation, and now your generation, you're wearing cattails, you think that's, you know, it's not related, it's related. So that's some brown sugar, black pepper, cayenne pepper, well, put the whole bowl in there, and then a little salt, and then just take, mix this up. Charles, when's the first time you made this? Probably when I was about 30. And I'm 72. Pork, one of our ingredients. I look like hamburger. <laughs> Charles. What I was going to get into eventually is that I'm deeply afraid of Charles. I think that he's a wild card. I think that he's a crazy son of a biscuit. And I think he's gonna come in here and I think he's gonna blow the roof off this place with whatever he cooks. And that is my honest opinion. And he said that this looks like hamburger and I gotta say, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we always knew participation trophies were a farce though, is the weird thing. Check this out, this is a fun story. I was in Cub Scouts when I was a kid and there's something called the Pinewood Derby where you get a little block of wood and you have to carve it with the help of a parent into a car that races down a little track. Problem is, some of us ain't really have parents and so I took a steak knife and I just whittled away at this car and it looked real messed up. I got a trophy for that car that barely rolled down the little hill, and the trophy was for most cub-built car. So the car that was most likely built by the actual Cub Scout, because I didn't have parents, and I stared at that trophy and cried that I did not have a non-cub to help me build the car. So the trophies didn't always help Charles. Yeah. When you make this, and it's like a lot of things, and Josh knows when you put it on there and cook it, when you want to open it up, it makes it turn brown. It's got a nice bark to it. And Makes it look good and you just take and Charles, just... what was the Revolutionary War like? Well, uh, I won't end the Revolutionary War, but I can tell you a little bit about the Vietnam War. So, I mean, if, if that's where you want to go, we can go there. Uh, yeah, so. Trevor, do you want to go there? Um, this is my first time cooking alone on the new burners. It's okay, I got it. I'm gonna get this cheese going in here. Nacho cheese. Pretty simple, you know, um, I don't have a lot of confidence, uh, so that's why I don't really take big swings. Um, you know, I just, I'm gonna really try and play it safe and at least not come last. Um, I think that that's something that, you know, is really defines Gen Z. <laughs> it's just, just not wanting to be the worst. Then you just rub this down good and keep it on there and wrap this up. And just wrap it up good. Charles, would you say you're an expert at rubbing down butts? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I've had four wives, and I don't know how many girlfriends. I've rubbed a many a butt. <laughs> I don't know much about Charles. He seems like an awesome guy. I know his son pretty well. I recently got Link's phone number, which has just been a treat. I mean, that ain't his real number. What? <laughs> That's not his, who have I been messaging? I sent, him a, I sent him a text and I was like, uh, <laughs> it was something, I think I said, Charles, hope you're having a hell of a Friday or something like that. Um, and then like six hours later, he texted me back and said, thinking about you always. So that was really special. I'm gonna go ahead and take the sauce. I'm gonna cover this pork belly with it. I'm gonna cover this pork belly. I'm gonna put it in the oven. Super low and slow, let that fat render out, get super unctuous. We did invent the word unctuous. Take that, Lord Byron. <laughs> and you just put it in the oven. 
and cook it for about six or eight hours at about 225 degrees. After a while, you'll see I got a, something special that goes on it. Now, Josh, I'm gonna wash my hands off. I believe you. <laughs> Brown sugar, a copious amount, obviously, as it is one of the ingredients that we must use, so I'm going very heavy on it. And some spices, I believe that is cumin and chili powder, jalapeno powder, um, tomato paste, and then a little salt and pepper. All right, we're gonna bake that off super low and slow. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna chill it, we're gonna slice it up, and then I'm gonna make some cabbage fritters. Josh thinks millennials invented cabbage. I don't think millennials invented cabbage at all. I think it was like Irish peasants like uh, a couple thousand years ago. Let's cut this up. Is this a recipe you made for any of those wives and girlfriends? Well, I will tell people this recipe of what I put in, how I make my sauce. My barbecue sauce, I've had four wives. Josh, ain't none of them got the recipe. <laughs> I'll give you $100 American for it, right now. You'd have to put a bunch of more zeros in front of it for that. <laughs> okay. You don't have to talk the whole time. You can stop for a second. Would you be more comfortable with the silence in the room if we just played TikToks out loud in the background? Okay, you say that. I actually, I'm not really on TikTok that much. I watch the TikToks that Raven sends me, um, but I have a deeper level of brain rot, I think, than a lot of Gen Zers. I think that my experiences with the internet go deeper than just TikTok. I've seen some really heinous stuff. First, I'm gonna get this in the oven. Charles, you know what this is? No, I can't see that from here. I'm too old. Wait, someone hand this to Charles. <laughs> Quino. Quino. <laughs> we are making some crispy Quino, fans of Dispatches of Myrtle Beach. We'll know what I'm talking about. Quinoa, as some would call it, is the ultimate millennial ingredient because we thought we found a grain that was healthier than all the other grains. Uh, it's from South America and it was considered exotic. And then we found out that we were basically destroying entire ecosystems by farming it. Uh, what basically amounts to strip mining entire Bolivian villages. And we went, oopies, our bad. We thought we helped, which is very, very millennial. Put some salt on it. Charles, your son is a member of Gen X, which some people have said we've excluded from this cooking competition. What do you think the biggest genera the biggest generational difference is with Link's generation and yours? Common sense. <laughs> Why didn't you teach him any common sense? Well, some things you can't teach to people. I can't do math anymore. It's like a real issue. I was doing something where math was required. That would be school. <laughs> I haven't been in school in a long time. No, I actually went to culinary school, which, you know, you might not be able to tell based on the way that I'm whipping this all up, uh, but I did. I'm good at cooking. I'm good at it. I'm gonna do a little drizz of the sizz. That's a little drizzle of the sizzle olive oil, not to be confused with the sizzle of the drizzle olive oil. This is the sizzle. This has a high smoke point to it, actually over 400 degrees, which means you can deep fry with it. That is pretty cool. So I'm gonna deep fry some fritters in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this quinoa coated, and I'm gonna just pop that in the oven, get it nice and crispy. Trevor, what do you know about destroying Bolivian towns? Quinoa sucks, dude, not even a top five grain. <laughs> Boo! Yeah, it's actually a seed, not a grain, which makes it um, healthy for the paleo diet because we're also responsible for CrossFit, and I'm so sorry. I got a good son. He done pretty well. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be standing here right now. That's what I'm telling you. It's, but Josh, it's funny when Link called me and asked me about doing my podcast that I do dispatches from Myrtle Beach. He said, Dad, let's me and you do a podcast together. And I said, a podcast? I, like, he had to explain it to me a little bit. And I said, well, if you think that'll be all right. And so we did three uh, is that an exact measurement? Well, it's close. <laughs> this is looking scrumptious. I believe that if the Rizzler and Big Justice were here, they would be saying this gets a boom on the boom meter. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk up this egg. I'm gonna create a simple fritter batter. We're just gonna get a sort of loose batter going. I'm gonna add some cornstarch. We're gonna do this gradually, cornstarch and flour. Um, Trevor mentioned self-sabotage earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause sometimes things 
are too good to be true, and then I get scared, and then I'm like, well, if I can just fail under my own control, then that makes me feel like I'm not powerless, at least. There we go. I think I do want more flour in there, because the cabbage. Give that a little dice up. Sorry, it's very loud. I know, that's my man. No culinary school self-taught, thank you very much. What's going on there? Wow. They're dropping so thank you, Trevor. I we are oh god, do we need praise. And this is apple cider vinegar. I'm stirring this up a little bit. Stir it up. And this is gonna be real scientific, Trevor and Josh. Just watch this. I mean I'm telling you. Oh, that's a lot of sugar. Um, it makes me sweet. <laughs> Paint cabbage going in the bag. Shred in it. Surely that's enough for one bag of Takis. Get those big chunks out of there. Oh, Gen Z, we love big chungus. Charles, you familiar with the big chungus? Absolutely not. Absolutely. You, Charles, you would love big chungus. <laughs> Okay, Charles, if you had to guess, what do you think Big Chungus is? What's well, hanging between my legs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk. Wow! <laughs> talk in that mess. That's crazy. No, I see, that's why I'm intimidated by it. You went and lube up my hands. I was gonna use a spoon, and then I just decided that I was gonna do that. And I should use a spoon, but now I just have lubed up hands. Don't don't mind me. Do not mind me. I kind of want to get, is that too big? Send it! Try and fry it like three at a time. Charles, would you rather be best friends with me or Josh? Oh, both. Oh. See? That's a participation trophy of friendship. <laughs> okay, so um, we're getting ready to put all this stuff in my bag. And you know, one of the, the, the hallmarks of the Generation Z is not going above and beyond. So, you know, I'm really just gonna kind of pop it in there. Um, okay, bag. Wow, there's no Takis in that bag. Look at that junk. Such a big bag for such a small amount of chips. That's shocking. This is outrageous. Okay, beef first. Beef. This is pork. Charles called it. The cabbage is gonna lose a lot of moisture. Why do I make things that I've never made before? I should just make things that I've made before. You know why? You know why? Because last time doing this, I made a hamburger and Patrick Q goes, Oh wow, you're really, really pushing the creative boundaries with that one. A hamburger, Josh, I've never heard of that. And I want his respect so bad, so now I'm making like a weird pakora inspired fritter with crispy quino. Okay, okay. Get this off, we're gonna let that fry for a couple seconds. I gotta wash all the olive oil off my hands. Yum, sizzle! And then you just pour it over the cabbage. Charles, what do you think the secret to a happy life is? Mm. Just being satisfied with yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say massaging butt. <laughs> this has been cooked, this has been chilled. I'm gonna slice it into like half inch thick slices. Josh. Yes, sir. You know what they call, boomers call that? Side meat and fat bag. Side meat and fat bag? That's what they call I think, them. Charles, I think we need to bring back some boomer lingo here. Complete <laughs> these fritters. These ended up looking delightful. Oh, another thing millennials invented, using plates that are not plates at all. This is a chalkboard that I got at Restaurant Depot for $11. If you ever go to a restaurant, you see them serving food, on plates like this, um, it's gonna be so much more expensive than it's actually worth. Especially if they kind of plate it off center like that. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Here we go. We got a Boston butt fresh out of the oven and put it right on the pan. And you wanna see what I mean about cooking it slow and easy. Just reach right down here and you pull that bone out of it and that meat just comes right off of it and you know it's done, and it's good. And you just reach down in here, because you see, it made that crust up on it that makes it ha have a nice little taste to it with what you're doing. And then 
This one's so good that I may not even need it because I don't like to chop my barbecue or pour it up real fine. I like it kind of medium. And let's just make sure it is good. Let's see. Mmm. 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 That'd make you slap your mama, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna go with a cabbage. Cabbage. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Okay, tomato. Go in fingers because I don't have enough spoons. Onion. Okay, here we go, here we go. Jalapeno. Just some of those in there. That's great, that's awesome. Get a couple more of those. I like, I like a little pickled jalapeno. Okay. Um, now, everyone, what are you doing on October 25th? Because I know what I'm doing, and I'll give you a little hint. It looks something like this. That's right, Good Mythical Evening is back on October 25th. It's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be scary. I'm gonna poop my pants, maybe. Who knows, you'll have to come find out. Get your tickets at goodmythicalevening.com. Okay, we're gonna top each one with I want like a couple slices of pork belly on there. Dude, Josh thinks millennials invented topping. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't even want to touch that one. A little bit of texture from that crispy quinoa right on top. Beautiful. Okay. Top it with microgreens. Because every restaurant adds these on top, so you will pay an additional $4 per item. Here comes the magic part. I've been making this barbecue sauce mm, since I was about 32. Like I said, I've had four wives and even my wonderful wife Nancy right now don't know how I make it. So you just take some of this and pour it over the pork butt, mesh it down in there. I'm just going Put your some up on the plate. Stir this slaw back up a little bit. Well, a what little do you bit. typically what do you typically garnish this plate with? Garnish? Yeah. I just that that's all I do. <laughs> that's garnish. Now I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of hot sauce and don't spill everything out of the bag. I'm going lefty on the hot sauce, that's crazy. I never do this, but you know, it's all about trying new things. Um, that's my bag of stuff. Woo! Woo! Thank you. And there we have it. Soy braised pork belly with crispy quinoa and cabbage fritters. I mean, this is a disgustingly millennial dish, but you know what? I am a Hufflepuff moon Ravenclaw rising. This is the culture of my people. I can have cheeseburger and eat it too. So that's my pork butt with my barbecue sauce and my homemade coleslaw. Hi, I'm here to taste these. <laughs> See, this one right here is beautiful. This one is amazing. This one's interesting. This one is intimidating. So what is this, like a, a pork s'more? Is that what it is? What is that? A fritter and a bacon? You know more about cooking than I thought you did. Hmm. <laughs> it's got an Asian flavor. <laughs> That's the best I can do. All right. I'm gonna come back to that. We've got a bag of Fuego Takis. And what is this for? Is this for the- It needs to hold up the bag of Fuego Takis. Oh. It's I, not related to the dish. I thought this was for the parts that I didn't want. <laughs> he don't need tomatoes. There's tomatoes. Forgot. Here we go. Oh, what is some, something hard down in the bottom. What's that? Oh yeah, that's a Taki. <laughs> hmm. I like that crunch. It's got some fuego, it's got some crunch, it's got some raw onions. There's a few rogue tomatoes that I'll continue to dodge, but I'm really liking this. 
It's ugly as all get out when you look down in it. <laughs> but that is good. That is good. I, I could see myself eating that on a couch, on a stroll, maybe even at a concert. What kind of artist would be there? I don't know, it's probably a millennial. But let's go to this third plate here. Look at this. This is clear presentation. I know what's happening. There's meats here. There's slaw here. There's sauce here. I know what to do. Just give me a minute. A little dip of dad's, I mean somebody's sauce. <laughs> and, and throw the slaw on there. Mmm. It's vinegary. It's got that pungency. This is good. Invite all your family. Get them to all wear the same t-shirt. Call it a reunion. Everybody will love you. I believe. What are my choices again? See this one here. I am going to say that this is, this has got that Gen Z faux sophistication to it. I am going to say that this bag of fun is just nothing but another day in a millennial's self-important life. <laughs> and I am going to go out on a big old limb with no other option left to me. That's the only reason I'm saying this. This, I guess this is Boomer. I don't know. So Boomer, Millennial, Gen, whatever the other one was. And which one was my favorite? Well, I'll say that I was, you know, I had a little extra time before I came in here today. I went by a local thrift store and I happened to find this shirt. I just thought it looked cool. It's, it's, it kind of has a party vibe. Have no clue who this guy is, but uh, boy would I like to get to know him and be related to him. Um, but am I one to play favorites? Hell yes, this is my favorite. <laughs> I gotta drive this man home to my house tonight and put up, put up with him for a couple of more days. Look, that dish was made by none other than your father. What? Dad, you're here, and I got a shirt, would you want it? We got the DNA test back, and he really is the father. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what you needed. Yeah, yeah, tell. exactly. Uh, I will say, you were wrong in that oh. I cooked this, and this is Trevor's. No, oh, that's what I was thinking. I just got what generations you are mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> I am self-important, so I get it. Link, Charles, thank you so much for oh, being yeah. here. Thank you for all the life lessons throughout all this. Like calling this side meat and fat back. I'm taking that yeah. to the grave. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Good Mythical Evening is coming up on October 25th. Get your tickets now at goodmythicalevening.com.